Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming September of 2017 premiere auction. And today we're taking a look at a SIG P210. Specifically, this is a Danish military contract model of the SIG P210. We'll talk more about the development of the 210 later, although there are actually some videos I've done on developmental versions of it if you're interested in them. However, uh, in 1948, the Danish government was, it was looking for a new service pistol for the police and the military. They had a couple of different models floating around that they'd been using. Uh, they had Bergman pistols, 1910s and 1910-21s, uh, that were in the now quickly becoming obsolete 9mm Bergman cartridge. And then they also had some Husqvarna M40s, a copy of the Lati L35 pistol from over the water in Finland and they wanted to standardize on something and they wanted a high quality new service pistol. So where do you look for a high quality new service pistol? Obviously Switzerland. And the Swiss had just been working on developing their own new pistol. Uh, there had been some competition between SIG and uh, Waffenfabrik Bern as well as a number of foreign competitors and the pistol that had proven to be the best designed through all of the Swiss testing and trials had been the SIG uh, P47-8. This was the 1947 model of pistol with an eight round single stack magazine. They did also have a 47 16 with a double stack magazine, but the Swiss turned that down. Uh, at any rate, the SIG factory, when the Danes came looking for a pistol, offered this P47-8 uh, for the Danish to try out, and the Danes put it through some testing in 1948 and adopted it in 1948. And they ordered a bunch, and the first batch was actually delivered in 1948. Uh, they were actually adopted as the Model M49. I would assume that they got them fairly late in the year in 48. Uh, at any rate, they ended up purchasing something like 26, 27,000 of these pistols uh, over a couple of batches. And they are basically, well, they are literally identical to Swiss Army uh, SIG P210s, or uh, actually the Swiss adopted it as the M1949 pistol as well as the Danes. So even the designation is the same. Uh, and what the Danes got with this was what I would say is arguably the highest quality service pistol ever manufactured en masse. This is, uh, I've heard some people describe it as a blend of Luger and 1911, and I think there's, that there's a lot of uh, legitimacy in that comparison. Mechanically, this is actually based on the 1935A French pistol designed by Charles Petter, uh, which is heavily influenced by the high power in the Browning 1911. But it's made with uh, a set of engineered clearances and tolerances and manufacturing quality control standards that are pretty far above what you would normally expect for a military service pistol. This really is more along the lines of a match gun than it is a, a service sidearm. And that's what the Swiss were looking for, and apparently that's what the Danes were quite happy to get as well. So let's take a closer look at this. Um, some of the features are obsolete today, uh, but made, well, they would have been familiar to folks in the 40s when these were adopted. These Danish pistols are identical to the Swiss military model, so we actually have to look to the markings to be able to tell the difference. We have three markings you can see here. One is just a SIG factory production mark, which doesn't tell us anything in this case. Uh, and then we have a Danish crown over FKF, and we have the Danish uh, model uh, designation. So it's a 9mm Parabellum pistol, model 49. Now that FKF stands for War Materials Administration, and there is actually another option. They, they are, some of them are also marked with a crown over an HTK, which stands for Army Technical Corps. And I'm not entirely sure what, the, what distinguishes those two from each other. However, they are distinguished by serial number. So if we look at the right side of the gun, you will see serial numbers on the barrel, slide, and frame, which should be matching, by the way. Um, there will also be a serial number on the fire control group, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, when the Danes ordered these, the first 16,607 were marked with the HTK crown, and then from 16,608 through 25,513, they were marked with FKF. So this one fits as it should into that serial range. There was then one third little batch of these pistols. Apparently it was overrun from a German contract, uh, and the Danes got 1,417 of them that had German serial numbers on them in the 5,000 and 6,000 range, 
and in order to differentiate them uh, and keep track of them properly without having duplicates in Danish inventory, they added a three to uh, all of those serial numbers. So they appear to be 35,000 to 36,000. Uh, in total, however, there were only approximately 27,000 of these guns purchased by the Danes. If you are looking at a SIG 210 and trying to figure out uh, who, who it was made for, uh, these Danish guns have no, no prefix on their serial numbers, where the Swiss ones will have an A prefix for army guns and a P prefix for commercial guns. We should talk briefly about the controls. The 210 is a single action gun, so uh, you would carry it Honestly, you'd probably carry it uh, in the military with an empty chamber and the hammer down and then rack around into the chamber when you were ready to fire. However, you could carry it with the hammer cocked and the safety engaged. That's a nice stiff safety lever. You are definitely not deactivating that by accident. Uh, and it is only right-handed. So if you're right-handed, that does fall reasonably nicely under the thumb and then you're ready to shoot. These have pretty typical fixed sights. Uh, not tiny. You could do a little bit of decent target shooting with one of those. And then these all have a heel magazine release, which was kind of the European standard. Uh, the trade-off here is a button release up on the trigger guard is faster, but is more prone to losing magazines. The heel release is slower, uh, but you're much less likely to lose track of the magazines or release one accidentally that way. Disassembly is going to, of course, start by removing the magazine. And just, there we go. Then the next steps are very much like disassembling a 1911 or a high power. You're going to take the slide stop out. However, unlike those other Browning pistols, you only push the slide back about a quarter of an inch on this guy. Let's see if I can find the spot there. There we go. So about that far back and then the slide stop will pop out. You can then slide the whole frame assembly off the gun. Uh, by the way, these things have very long, continuous uh, engagement on the slide rails. The slide itself is mounted inside the frame. This is part of where these guns get their reputation for accuracy, is there is a very fine-tuned fit between the slide and the frame. In the slide assembly, we can then remove the recoil spring. This is captive, which is a really good idea, so that comes out without any trouble. And then we can take the barrel out. You'll notice this has the high power style of uh, cam. We've got locking lugs on the top of the barrel. They lock into, of course, the hood of the slide. That's all very typical uh, browning and high power style. One last bit of disassembly that you don't see in the high power, but you do see in the 1935A or the uh, Soviet Tokarev pistol is a removable single uh, modular fire control unit. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the trigger and then, or drop the hammer. And then the whole hammer and sear and ejector assembly comes out as a single unit, including its spring. So if anything goes wrong with one of these guns in service, uh, it's very easy for an, it, you don't even have to be an armor, for any sort of uh, guy with some spare parts to pop out the whole trigger assembly the whole fire control assembly, replace it with a new one, and then send this back to be repaired somewhere. Being of Swiss manufacture, though, it does, of course, have a serial number on this assembly. And there you have one completely field-stripped Danish M49 SIG service pistol. In 1995, the Danish government surplused a bunch of its M49 pistols. They were actually purchased by Hammerley. It's kind of interesting. Hammerley was at that point owned by SIG, so it's kind of SIG rebuying their own guns. Uh, Hammerley then sorted them, graded them based on whether they were, you know, the condition and whether they were in original or refinished state, and uh, packaged them up for commercial resale. In 1998, there was a company that arranged to import a bunch of them into the U.S., and that's where most of our M49 Danish SIGs come from, uh, including this one. This was originally a Category B gun of A through E, so pretty nice. It means it was in good original condition but had a matte finish, which you already saw. So anyway, if you would like to have this one, uh, take a look at the description text below the video. You'll find down there a uh, link to Rock Island's catalog page on this particular 210, and you can check out their photos and their description and their price estimates and all that sort of stuff on Rock Island's catalog. And if you're interested in purchasing it, well, you can place a bid uh, through the website over the phone or come here and participate live in the auction. Thanks for watching.